Welcome to Jamie TV, thank you for tuning in. If you watch this channel regularly, you will know that I absolutely love drum machines, whether it be hardware or software. And I'm a huge fan of the Yamaha black boxes from the 80s, the RX series. Flagship models would be the RX11, RX5, maybe RX7, and there's a whole bunch of other interesting ones too. Now, I recently had a chance to buy an RX17 in a house clearance sale for 20 Earth shitters. The internal battery had expired, it's leaked on itself a little bit, but it is the original battery and it hadn't leaked on the circuit board. So I simply fitted a new battery like a clever hippie and it's working absolutely perfect. And it's actually, it's immaculate. So as a starting point for this video, let's have a listen to the individual sounds. A bit of a mixed bag then, and the thing about the RX-17 is, it was one of the cheaper Yamaha black boxes, so you can't even load any extra sounds into it from a memory card or anything, it doesn't have that feature. But fortunately, later in this video, we're going to take a look at a piece of software that's going to help us take these sounds to a whole new level. What I want to know for now though, is the RX-17, does it synthwave? Yeah, you don't need to see much more of me pissy panting about with the tempo pad to be convinced that I am the world's worst finger drummer. So jumping forward in time like a Time Lord that can actually control his TARDIS, I've got some drum MIDI for the whole track, and I think the sounds from the RX-17 are going to work out perfectly. But they need some work, as you'd expect, so we're going to make them punch proper with FAC Punch Lab. My mix is a mess, I know, but I would never even begin to finalise sounds or mix a track like this until I've got a great drum sound happening. I'll record the drums into Cubasis 3 as real audio and then we'll get to work. FAC Punch Lab was created by Fred Anton Corvist, one of the leading and most inspirational developers of iOS music applications. He describes it as a beat energizer and sonic revitalizer. In essence, it is a convenient rack of effects that can be used to subtly enhance or add a completely new flavor and new characteristics to any instrument. 
It is particularly effective for drums and percussion, but can be used to great effect on almost any instrument. I have an instance of Punch Lab as an insert effect on each individual drum in this project. And there's another instance on my drum bus, that's 15 instances already, plus I'm also using it on the Donna B1, the Uno synth and my TX7. Cubasis 3, which is also handling various other AUV3 instruments and effects, is currently averaging about 25% DSP. No other iOS host currently handles as many AUV3s at one time without falling over as Steinberg's groundbreaking mobile door, including Logic Pro for iPad and AUM. Let's hear a before and after. All instances of Punch Lab on my RX-17 drums switched off. And now with them back on. There are already good walkthroughs of Punch Lab available on YouTube, so instead of repeating more of the same content, I'm going to show you how I've actually used it in this composition. For this track, for the most part, I'm not looking to create wild and experimental new percussion sounds. Mostly, I just need subtle enhancement, but I'm going to show you the crazy things it can do as well. Here's the kick drum I recorded from the RX-17 and at the top you can see there's a visualizer that will reflect changes that we make in Punch Lab. I can grab here and pull down to decrease the amount of signal coming into Punch Lab, or up to increase obviously. And I can do the same over here for the output, which is something I've been using to gain stage my drums. I can also click here or here to switch the visualizer on and off. What I added to my kick was the EQ, attack and tone modules, which we just tap at the top to switch on or off. You can see I've added a little bump to the EQ, around 90 Hz, just to add a little more thump. I can change the frequency of the little mountain down here. and adjust the boost or cut with the gain control here. And then we have the same thing over here for higher frequencies. Attack is a transient designer, which I have used to add more emphasis to the kick's attack by just bringing up the depth a little and having a short slope, which we adjust here. The visualizer for this one really helps you understand what changes to the slope actually do. We can of course use it to soften the attack and if we do this with the punch, it kind of sounds a little more like an old school kick drum. The tone control is a shelf filter. At this side I can decide whether we are cutting lows and increasing highs or vice versa. And by what degree of course. To the right I can change at what frequency the filter flips. But I don't need this for my kick. But what I am using is the high pass filter down here to get rid of the subby frequencies. And there's a low pass filter over here as well. Cutting those fat low subby frequencies has done just as much to help this kick cut through as boosting a couple of important frequencies. Looking at my snare, you'll see that I'm using those same three modules and some others in addition. You'll also notice that the modules are not in the same order. If we press this button down here, we can move the modules around and see what difference that makes to the sound 
in much the same way as a guitar player might experiment with the order of pedals on a pedal board. There is no correct order. Just experiment and trust your ears. Fat is used to add saturation. Here I dial in the amount of saturation and at this side I can set the amount of gain before the effect. There are five different types of saturation to choose from down here. I felt that the RX-17 snare was in the right ballpark for this kind of track, but it lacks some bite and aggression, which it certainly isn't lacking now. If we take a look at the ride from the RX-17, which I really like, you'll see that I've found a frequency here rich in harmonic overtones, and I've boosted it. Then I've used heat, the harmonic exciter, to emphasize and colorize those overtones. The oxygen control changes the coloration and character of the exciter. I've very much exaggerated the effect here, so that you can hear what it can do. I'll take this back to a subtler setting for my track, but I think that this coloration will make the ride easier to mix whilst also just sounding more interesting. Boom is a resonant filter. Here we select a pitch for the emphasized overtone. I'll have a little pissy pants through the pitches for you and then set it to the root note of the key this track is in. I want to add an extra layer to this bass drone, just more character, another layer of sound. And here we set the depth and decay. The audition control allows us to only hear the new overtone. I'm going to switch heat and fat back on here and switch on high quality here to allow oversampling. Switch on the hard limiter and drop this effect back in the mix and switch on one of my favorite effects. No rack of effects like this would be complete without a clipper at the end of the chain for maximizing loudness. Here we can move anywhere between super soft knee and super hard knee. And control the gain here. This control will adjust the curve of the harmonic profile. And we can choose to use full or half auto gain here. When gain staging my instruments, I found a combination of using the clipper and output attenuator to be invaluable. Fizz will add a digital overtone to a sound. What I've done here with this bass sound coming from the Donna B1 is really helping it to cut through the mix. Similarly to the boom module, we select a frequency to modulate here. Then the depth and the cue of the modulation with these controls. And then we can toggle through modulation types here. I use these two timbali sounds in a kind of breakdown section of this tune but really wanted to do something a bit epic 
to bring them to life, so I automated movement in the pitch of the boom module for each one manually and kind of randomly and made sure if the overtone for one timbali was going down in pitch, the other was going up. At the same time, I just pissipanted around with the depth of the modulation on the fizz module and then dropped the mix back on both of them to blend the effect into the raw sound. For this video there are two sets of hippie conclusions to draw. First of all, the RX-17, it kind of has two banks of sounds. The first bank being a very 80s sounding bank of electronic drum sounds and aside from a couple of duds, I really really like them. The other bank though, the percussion sounds, there were a few that I liked, but mostly to me, to my ears, they were total pants. What I don't have time to show you in this video is that the pattern mode and the song mode are very easy to use. I didn't read a manual, I just pissed it around, very quickly figured out how to use them. It does have some nice features to explore. If you'd like to see a video where I explore all of that stuff, comment below. If enough people do so, I will make that video. Downsides though would be that, as previously mentioned, you are stuck with the sounds that it comes with and it only has stereo out. So, if you like the sounds of this drum machine and you're making synth wave, you know, 80s sounding electronic, uh, electronic pop stuff, then if you get a chance to get hold of one cheaply, do so. It's a lot of fun, I do recommend it, but if it's going to be a costly affair, then I would save you money and put it towards one of the more high spec Yamaha black boxes from the 80s. Now, Punch Lab, I cannot recommend highly enough. I couldn't find a single flaw with it, not a glitch, not a bug, it's brilliantly well coded and it's very very well thought out. Something that occurs to me though about a rack of module effects like this, I suspect that a lot of people won't buy it because it's more exciting to buy a new synth app or a new drum machine app and I get that, but to me a lot of the time when we're buying more and more synths and more and more drum machines, whether it be software or hardware, we're getting the same sounds, just dressed up a little, just tweaked a bit, but really more of the same. So would it not make more sense, as a thought for you today, to buy Punch Lab and use Punch Lab to take those old sounds and make new from old, tweak them to suit your track, just use your ears and make new sounds. I think that really is a more progressive a more fascinating idea. For future development of this app, I wonder whether it might be possible for Fred to add a feature where you could click on the EQ module and it would open up and make more bands available to tweak, more little mountains to play with. Just because for me, there were times when I felt like I'd like to tweak another band. And yes, I could use it in conjunction with another EQ app, but it would be nice to have it all in the same rack. And really, that's all I can think of to say about it. No criticisms whatsoever. So yeah, boring conclusion, I have failed as a YouTuber. If you have any questions about this video, please do comment below. I always reply. Until my next video, take good care of yourselves, be kind, be good people, make lots of music, play lots of video games, and try not to piss pants about. I'll see you later.